Hello, my name is Holland, and this is my tutorial on the Electrosmith Daisy Seed. This tutorial will go over how to set up your Daisy and create a simple synthesizer using VS Code. Please know that this tutorial was made on Mac and was meant to be followed on a Mac. So, for Windows, the process may be different at times. Since this tutorial is for beginners, it won't go into advanced C++ coding or hardware design. However, links are provided on my website via the description below. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need VS Code, the DAISY toolchains, and the DAISY examples repository. For hardware, you will need one Electrosmith DAISY seed, one breadboard, and preferably a nice one, one micro USB cable, one audio jack, two 10K potentiometers, a button, and an assortment of wires. All of this can be found, again, on my website, link below. First, let's open the folder in VS Code. Let's click File, Open Folder, and then find your Daisy Examples folder. Then we're going to go down to Seed. There's also the pod, pedal, and patch. However, this tutorial will be going over the daisy seed. Then find the oscillator example from here. So it should be right here. And then just click open. So now that we are in the folder, you can see all the contents of this folder are all open and available to be edited in VS Code. There are multiple files here in this folder, but the main one we'll be concerned about is the oscillator.c++ file. The oscillator.c++ file defines what our DAISY is doing. It is an ordered set of instructions for our DAISY to process when it starts up. For now, all you need to know is that this particular program creates a simple sound, a sine wave to be exact, for us to verify that we have everything up and running. Now that we have the set of instructions that we want our DAISY to execute, we now need to turn it into something that the microcontroller can read. This process is called compiling, and it is how we turn the code from our human language to something that the computer can understand. Doing this is simple, however, this is where you can tell whether or not the DAISY tool chain is set up correctly on your computer. So first, click Terminal on the top here, and click New Terminal. Now, we're going to type make. If you get this result where it shows the memory usage, that means that your DAISY toolchain is um, configured correctly. If you get something other than this that says some sort of error, then that means your DAISY toolchain or make is not compiled correctly, and you should look back at the Electrosmith tutorials. Now we need to upload the compiled files to the DAISY. Connect the DAISY via micro USB to your computer. It should light up when you do this. Hold the boot button and then click reset to let the DAISY accept uploads. The reset light should now be brighter when you do this. Then type in your terminal make program dash DFU and hit enter. This will erase whatever is in the DAISY currently and upload the new files. Congratulations, you successfully uploaded code to your DAISY microcontroller. Now we need to get audio from the DAISY. We will do this by creating a simple circuit. First, plug the DAISY seed anywhere on your breadboard and make sure that all the pins go into the breadboard fully. Plug the analog ground pin into the negative terminal. Then plug the digital ground pin into the negative terminal as well. This will ensure the DAISY is grounded with the rest of our circuit. Next, get your audio jack. Identify which terminal is TIP and connect the TIP to pin 18. Then identify which terminal is RING. Connect the RING to the negative terminal of the breadboard. By doing so, this will give you the right output of the DAISY. Now if you connect the DAISY via USB, you should hear a simple sine wave coming from the device. This section will be dedicated to showing what the C++ file is doing and how to go about editing it. This section will go over some of the basics of digital signal processing, however, basic C++ knowledge is required. 
There will be links to C++ tutorials on my website in the description below. Let's start at the top of the file. The top section of your program is usually dedicated to linking the libraries and creating the objects to be used throughout the file. The include statements link the DAISY library to the program itself. Using namespace allows us to not have to type DAISY or DAISY SP before every function slash object in the DAISY library. Static DAISY seed is an object that handles the hardware for the DAISY, so you don't have to configure it yourself. And then static oscillator is a simple sound generator. Next, let's go to the main function. The main function is used primarily for initializing objects and variables to be used in the seed.startAudioCallback function. Let's go through each of these lines one by one. First, we have the seed.configure and seed.init functions located right here. Both functions initialize the hardware. This allows for a default state to be created for the hardware, which helps with preventing glitches. Then we have the sample rate. The sample rate needs to be initialized for use within objects like the oscillator object. Anything that has to do with time in our DAISY program will need the sample rate. Finally, we have the oscillator initialization and default parameters right here. This creates a default state for the oscillator object while also passing in the sample rate. Set waveform changes what sound the oscillator will play. Currently, we have it set to a sine wave. Oscillator.setFreak will set the pitch of an, the oscillator. Then, osc.setAmp sets how loud the oscillator is. Lastly, we have the c.startAudio audio callback function located right here. The program then runs the start audio function defined at the middle of the file. This function is where our oscillator will be playing, where our audio comes in, and where it comes out, making it one of the most important functions in the file. Now we have the audio callback function. This is where our audio is processed. Right now, the oscillator is being processed and creates a sine wave. Then it is played through the left speaker and then played through the right speaker. With this understanding of the code, we can now edit it. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the frequency of the oscillator. So go to your main void function and change set freak from 440 to 880. Then we're gonna change the amplitude of the oscillator. So set amp, and I'm gonna change that to 2.5, so half the volume. Now let's upload the code to the daisy seed. First, let's make sure that the file has been saved. So let's go into file, save. Next, let's open up our terminal and type make. This will compile our code. Next, connect our daisy seed via micro USB and then hold the boot button and then click reset to have the daisy accept uploads. Then type make space program dash dfu and then hit enter. This will upload our code to the daisy. And if no errors occurred, like so, your daisy should be playing one octave higher than before. Finally, let's add a knob and a button so we can control the daisy. We will set the knob to control the pitch of the oscillator and a button to control the oscillator's volume. First, we have to create some code to get data from the knob and button. Then we'll connect the hardware to the daisy. First, let's create the code for the knob. Let's create an object called ADC channel config and we're gonna name it ADC config. Next, let's add the line ADC config dot init single seed dot get pin 21. This will initialize pin 21 on the daisy seed to be used for our potentiometer. This pin could be any audio to digital converter pin, but we'll be using pin 21 for this tutorial. Next, let's add the following line to our code seed dot adc dot init and then let's reference 
our ADC config and one channel. This will now initialize the DAISY hardware with this new configuration. So it's referencing the ADC config object and it's setting one channel because we only have one knob. If you'd want multiple knobs, then you'd have to change this number. Finally, let's have the, uh, the hardware actually read this new configuration. So we're going to type seed.adc.start. This will then start up the hardware configuration for the daisy. Next, let's set the code for the button. Before we edit the main function, we need to create a new object called switch. And we're going to call this button1. Next, let's initialize this button. So we're going to say button1 dot init seed dot get pin 28 comma 1000 this will go and initialize the button on pin 28 and that's all you need for the button finally let's actually control the oscillator with our code so first the knob Let's go and create a variable here in the audio callback, and we're going to call it knob. So float knob, and we're going to set that equal to the knob's value. So seed.adc.getfloat0. So we say get float 0 because that's the first channel. Remember that in digital systems, normally it counts up from zero. So this is the first channel in the ADC. Next, let's set the frequency of the oscillator using this value. So we're going to say osc.setfreq. And we're going to do knob times 440.0f plus... 440.0f and then semicolon. This will basically set our oscillator to either be at 440 hertz when it's at zero or 880 hertz when it's at max value. So it'll go up an entire octave. Next, the button. First, let's add the line button one dot debounce. This will make the daisy check if the button is being pressed. Then we're going to do osc.setamp and we're going to do button1.pressed. So again, it's going to check if the button is being pressed. If it is being pressed, then it'll set the amplitude to one. If it's not being pressed, then it'll be zero and you won't hear anything. Finally, let's go save the code, go into our terminal, and type in make. And compiles like normal. Finally, we can add the hardware to the DAISY. If you want to know more about circuits, please look at the resources featured on my website to find out more. First, let's add the button. Wire one terminal to ground, and then wire the other terminal to pin 28. Now when the button is pressed, the daisy will be able to detect it. Now let's add the knob. Wire the first terminal to ground, the middle terminal to pin 21, and the last terminal to pin 38. This will take in voltage and will change it depending on the position of the knob. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you want to learn more about digital signal processing or microcontrollers, then please check the link down below. But as always, have a good one.